Hey guys, Brad here today from the OFAH. In today's lesson, we'll aim to learn about my personal favorite game species, grouse. In Ontario, we have four species of grouse, and in today's lesson, we'll aim to answer five questions about these species. How do we identify grouse? Where do they live? What do they eat? What are they known for? And can you harvest grouse in Ontario? So stick around today as we aim to answer these five questions all about grouse. How do we identify grouse? Grouse are birds that belong to the order Galliform, an order of ground-dwelling birds. They're distant cousins to ring-neck pheasants and wild turkeys. While there's a wide range of species within this family around the world, there are some common features that most of the grouse species share. Ontario's grouse species are each about the size of a small chicken, and they're often referred to as bush chickens or forest chickens. In general, most grouse species exhibit sexual dimorphism, meaning that males and females look different from one another. In some cases, very different. Males tend to be larger than females and may have some distinct physical traits, such as colorful feathers or crests. Grouse don't have spurs on their legs like chicken or turkeys, as the two groups are separate. But their toes are covered in feathers, or they grow something we call pectinations, which are fleshy, comb-like structures on their toes and feet. They grow these to help insulate themselves and to stay aloft in deep snow, much like snowshoes. While these species are very capable of flight and they can reach impressive speeds while flying, they do prefer to walk or run. In Ontario, we have four species of grouse. Two of them are very common to see and two of them are only found in smaller, specific areas of the province. Ontario's species are the very common ruffed grouse and spruce grouse, as well as the less common sharp-tailed grouse and willow ptarmigan. The ruffed grouse is a chicken-sized bird about 30 to 40 centimeters in height. They have reddish-brown to gray-brown colored feathers, and ruffed grouse come in different colored patterns known as color phases, but they're always a combination of these color tones. They also have a short crest on their head and bars of color on their flanks, as well as a black ruff around their neck. The ruff on their neck is where they get their name of ruffed grouse. Sometimes this black ruff is hard to see, but other times it may be puffed out and on display. Ruffed grouse have a short, slightly curved, pointed beak and a long, square, fan-shaped tail, which can be laid out flat or fanned out, much like a turkey does. These birds can be very well camouflaged as their brown, gray, reddish color patterns blend into the forest floor extremely well. Males and females look almost the same, except for a colored band across their tail feathers. The band on a male's tail will be solid all the way across, where a female will have a broken color to the banding in the middle tail feathers. This can be very hard to see, but it's a great indicator of which sex you're looking at. Spruce grouse are very similar in size to rough grouse, but slightly smaller. They can look very different from rough grouse depending upon their sex. There can be subtle differences between birds, but males can be identified by having black colors on their feathers on the lower or mid parts of their body and gray colors above. Patterns and colors can differ, however, particularly in the pattern of the tail and the white areas on their undersides. Males also have a red patch of skin over their eye. Females can be identified by their reddish brown gray pattern feathers and white bars on their bellies. Many people often confuse a female spruce grouse with a rough grouse. However, a spruce grouse has a dark tail with a pale colored band on the end. Well, the complete opposite is true with the rough grouse, the lighter colored tail and a black band along the tip of the tail. Sharp tail grouse also in many ways resemble rough grouse and female spruce grouse, but there are some key differences to tell them apart. 
their plumage consists of mottled, brown-gray colorings against a background of white. Sharptails have light underparts and a white belly with V-shaped markings. It's these markings that make the sharptail grouse distinguishable from other similar species. The bird gets its name because of a much shorter tail than other grouse species. Their tail features two central feathers that are lighter and longer than the outer tail feathers, and when they're displayed, they taper to a point. Adult males usually have a violet display patch on the neck under their chin, as well as a bright yellow comb where the eyelid would be over the eyes. A female is considerably smaller than a male and can be identified by horizontal markings on the back feathers, whereas in males, these markings are usually irregular. Willow ptarmigan are much like other grouse species as they have a deep chest, fairly long neck, a broad bill, short feathered legs, and a moderately short rounded tail. In the summer, willow ptarmigan males are marbled brown with a reddish hue to the neck and breast, a black tail, white wings, and undersides. They have a red semicircular comb or eyebrow-like feature above each eye. This becomes more red and prominent in the breeding season. Females are similar in appearance to the males, but with much smaller eye combs and brown feathers scattered among the white feathers on their bellies. During winter, the bodies and two central tail feathers of both sexes become completely white, except for the black outer rectrices. Rectrices are the tail feathers that birds use to steer while in flight. Willow ptarmigan's wing feathers remain white all year round. And in winter, their feet are heavily feathered right to the tips of the toes. These feathers increase the surface area of the feet and act as snowshoes, allowing these birds to walk easily over fresh snowdrifts, which are abundant where they live. Which brings me to the next question. Where do they live? In Ontario, the four grouse species all live in different habitats, with some overlap. Let's get into the details for each species. Rough grouse are the most widely distributed resident game bird in all of North America. In Ontario, they can be found throughout the province, except for in the extreme northern parts of the province where the tree line dwindles along the shores of Hudson Bay. They thrive best where forests are kept young and vigorous by occasional clear-cut logging or fire, and their numbers gradually diminish as forests mature. Their critical food and cover resources deteriorate in the shade of a climax, or what we would call mature forest. Dense thickets and forests are used by hens to rear their chicks. The cover helps them hide from aerial and ground predators until they can fly better to evade these predators. Adults tend to spend more time in mature forests and open habitat, foraging in the understory but they still seek thick cover for security and food. Additionally, small openings and trail networks can benefit ruffed grouse because they usually offer green plants and plentiful insects for younger birds. Spruce grouse share a similar range across Canada as ruffed grouse. They're generally found beginning slightly further north in Ontario, with their sightings in southern Ontario being rare. Spruce grouse are in northern regions of the province in quite heavy numbers. In some cases, even more so than rough grouse, depending upon the habitat. Although a dense understory, or layer of vegetation beneath the canopy, of food-bearing shrubs is as important for spruce grouse as it is for rough grouse, they can largely be found in thicker and more mature forests. Forests such as conifer, pine, and muskeg are preferred. They're almost always found in these conifer forests, but not necessarily always in spruce-heavy growth. That's because spruce grouse prefer to roost above the ground, most often in these coniferous, or sometimes in mixed wood-dominated stands. The sharp-tailed grouse is typically a prairie bird, and an open habitat is normal when people think of these beautiful birds. They can, however, be found in the north of Ontario, 
In Ontario, they can be found north of and northwest of Lake Superior, out towards the Manitoba border, as well as in the Sault Ste. Marie and Manitoulin Island districts. These birds inhabit grasslands, brushy prairies, and edges of woodlands. In northern Ontario, they prefer to live in open forested habitat, such as mature deciduous forests, and in areas which have been recently logged, burned, or open farmlands bordering on forests. In Ontario, willow ptarmigan breed mainly on the Hudson Bay coast. They're typically a tundra dwelling bird, but can be found in the boreal forest at certain times of year. The willow ptarmigan is a migratory grouse. During the breeding season, or summer, willow ptarmigan inhabit subarctic and subalpine habitats where there is abundant shrubby vegetation. During this season, they favor flat, moist areas. In autumn, willow ptarmigan migrate southwards into the boreal forest for the winter, but there's much local variation in these movements. It is thought that big migrations occur when populations are too high for a region, causing them to move further south into the boreal forest than usual. What do they eat? When the ground is free of snow, ruffed grouse feed on a wide variety of green leaves, fruits, and some insects. They've also been known to eat snakes, frogs, and salamanders. When snow covers the ground, rough grouse become almost exclusively flower eaters, living on the dormant flower buds and catkins of trees such as aspen, birch, poplar, cherry, and others. Spruce grouse eat mostly conifer needles. Adult birds are primarily herbivores, feeding heavily on needles of pine, spruce, and other conifers. This diet concentrates even more heavily, and almost exclusively in certain locations, on needles into and through the winter. At other times of the year, spruce grouse are known to eat fresh green shoots, grasses, leaves of other plants, berries, flowers, insects, snails, and mushrooms. Sharp-tailed grouse forage on the ground in summer and in trees in winter. They eat seeds, buds, berries, forbs, and leaves. They also eat insects, especially grasshoppers in summer. In winter, when their food sources are mostly buried by snow, they are known to feed heavily on buds of trees and shrubs. Willow ptarmigan have a simple diet of plant materials. Primarily, they eat flower buds, catkins, leaves, twigs, berries, and seeds. In summer, they also eat whatever insects are available, both from the ground and in low-growing vegetation. Specific plant foods include willow, blueberry, birch, poplar, and seeds of various grasses. What are they known for? Rough grouse are well known for their various nicknames. They're often referred to as a partridge, although they aren't actually a partridge. It is a very common name for them in many parts of Canada and the US. They're also known as bush chickens due to their resemblance to a chicken in size and movements. One of their nicknames in hunting circles is King of the Game Birds, as they are widely known as one of the hardest birds to successfully shoot if you're trying to shoot at them while flying. Rough grouse are also known as the nickname of a drummer. This is due to the mating activity of males in the spring. Males find a rock, log, fence, or other elevated object to stand on. There, they rapidly beat their wings, forcing air against their body and creating a drumming sound. This is a very familiar sound of spring for those who are familiar with this sound. The rapid beating sounds, which last a few seconds, speed up in tempo before finally tapering off. This sound is often confused for someone trying unsuccessfully to start a motor in the distance. Grouse will use the same drumming spot, known as a lek, year after year, and often the offspring of males in an area will use an older lek meaning these leks can be used for many generations. Spruce grouse are well known for one common nickname that they have. 
That nickname is Fool's Hen, particularly in the northern regions of the province. Spruce grouse are so well camouflaged that while they're in forested habitat, they have adapted to freeze and stay as still as possible, whereas rough grouse flush or fly away. This means that often spruce grouse are seen just sitting in wait, and they can be approached to within a few meters in many cases. This behavior gives them the appearance of being fools, but instead, they've simply adapted to rely upon their ability to blend into their surroundings. Much like roughies, sharpies are also known for their mating behavior, which also occurs in an area called a lek. For sharp-tailed grouse, their leks are simply open areas that they will use year on year. Males will display on the lek by stamping their feet rapidly, about 20 times a second, and rattling their tail feathers while turning in circles or dancing forward, and then squatting to the ground with their wings spread and tails erect in the air. Their purple neck sacs are inflated and deflated during this display. The males use cooing calls to attract and compete for females. Females will then select the most dominant male to mate with. Our last question today is, can you harvest grouse in Ontario? The answer is yes. To hunt for grouse in Ontario, you'll need a valid outdoors card with a hunter accreditation and a federal firearms license if you plan to hunt with a firearm. Depending upon the region of the province, seasons open around mid-September and in the north continue until March 31st. In the southern parts of the province, the seasons for these birds finish at the end of December. Ontario's grouse species are usually hunted one of three ways. They're often hunted with bird dogs, either flushing dogs who are trained to flush the birds within shooting distance, or pointing dogs who are trained to point the birds until the hunter can get close enough to flush the birds themselves. These dogs are then trained to scent and retrieve any dead or injured birds and to gently return them to the hunter. These birds are also often hunted on foot without dogs, with hunters simply moving slowly through the habitat, down trails, looking and listening intently for any sign of these birds or their movements. This method can be very tough, as in certain regions, grouse species can be very wary and they will flush quickly and out of range for a walking hunter. Hunting without a dog also brings the challenge of retrieving your own injured or dead birds. And with their ability to camouflage, these species can sometimes be practically impossible to find. The last way that these birds are commonly hunted, especially on the massive networks of logging and bush roads in the northern parts of the province, is by truck or ATV. These species will often be found feeding along the road on succulent greens or gathering the gravel from roads to break down food in their crops. So, a common way to target these birds is to drive roads in hopes of a sighting. Just a reminder that in the province of Ontario, it is illegal to shoot from, on, or across the traveled portion of a trail or roadway. So, if you're hunting this way, make sure to follow the birds off of the road before shooting. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and comment below. Don't forget to check out the resources section on our webpage. There you'll find free printable resource material like mini lessons and activity pages to follow up the virtual lessons. And please subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside of the classroom.